Mark Ball's mother, Diane Sprouse, is here with me today on Truth Talk News on a special report uh, discussing some updated information regarding events on Friday. What, what happened on Friday, Diana? On Friday, the public defender, Wanda Gehrman, called me to tell me that the judge, she had gone before the judge, this judge, um, Frank, K-U-N-D-R-A-T, Kundrat, okay, at the Stearns County Courthouse. And the judge denied a continuance, although the prosecution has had three. Secondly, the judge denied a psych evaluation to prove his severe post-traumatic stress disorder and see the condition that he is in currently with his brain injuries and so forth, um, and also the severe PTSD. Uh, thirdly, the diminished capacity defense, he said no. So they, he doesn't no, believe him to be diminished? That's unbelievable. So... <clears throat> no diminished capacity um, so his, from his, being overdosed on the phenobarbital. Is that That's right? That's right. And I, his phenobarbital levels, which I've gone over the their records from the uh, St. Cloud Hospital, at the very day this happened, were at 50.0, which I looked up online at uh, St. Mary's madison.com backslash lab critical values. Uh, 50.0 is considered a panic critical value, panic critical value for phenobarbital. That's when this happens. That's where his levels were. So as a result of these levels, of these high levels of phenobarbital, um, he doesn't remember anything, obviously. And, uh, and the brain injuries. And he also had the brain injuries from this attempted, uh, this assault and attempted rape by Darcy T. Lewis. Okay, the next thing was, okay, he denied the diminished capacity defense. He denied the involuntary intoxication defense. He, did, he will not allow into admission any, any medical reports, jail medical records, hospital records, video records of the assault, epilepsy records, EEG records from when they had him hooked up on EEGs with video and the normal EEG that was recording the brain injuries and that his brain's abnormal and so on. They will not allow, the judge will not allow um, the CAT scan records. He will not let him use a so, mental so, illness defense. So basically he is not, he, he, he has no defense. They're just saying right. you're going you're gonna to go to jail and take this plea bargain, and that's just the way it is because we're a totalitarian socialist state now. Well, it's a little bit worse. Oh God! He won't even allow any witnesses to testify on Mark's behalf. No witnesses either. No witnesses. I'm the witness, and I've been called by the state prosecuting attorney to testify against my son. I'm the only person to testify against my son. But no, we, we can't have any witnesses either. That's unbelievable. I mean, truly is a miscarriage of justice. It's beyond that. It's tyranny. It is, this is despotism. You'd expect to see this in Nazi Germany or in Stalinist Russia or under the Stasi in, in, in East Germany. Uh, the, you know, it's just he's been targeted. Why would you think that this could be possible that he would be targeted clearly? Is it because of the fact that they're hiding the crime? They're, they committed medical malpractice, and there's obviously uh, legal ramifications as well as covering this up. Yes, I think that's exactly why. He was overdosed in the jail, the first jail in Oka County, where he was assaulted brutally on phenobarbital. That was the condition I got him in. Brain injury, a new brain injury, and uh, very severe with the overdose of the phenobarbital. And then had him taken by ambulance to St. Cloud Hospital. That's where I learned about the phenobarbital overdose. And then when he was arrested from ICU there for this alleged assault, when they clearly provoked it. I mean, if you could see and hear the witness, you know, statements to the police there, you, you, you would see what I, exactly what I'm talking about. Um, PCA came in and 
lied to him, told him if he could walk to the door, that he could, she would help him pack his stuff so he could leave. So two people were helping him walk. He walked out the door with two staff members, one on either side, helping him get out and walked down the hallway a little bit and then turned him around and brought him back into his room. And so he thought he could leave. So then they send all these people in because he's upset now. And they're trying to calm him down. But he's not having it. He wants to leave. They initiate the 72-hour hold. And then he starts trying to bust his way through a six-story plate glass window that was the wall in his hospital room. He was scared. They wouldn't let him out the door, and he was leaving one way or another. He didn't understand that he was six stories up in the air, obviously. Um, and then they dogpiled him by their own witness statements. Um, the lady that got injured, they brought her down. She's the case manager from um, mental health. They call her down. She admits she, has, she knows no history about this man, okay? She gets in there, and she's trying to do this on her own, trying to negotiate with my son. And then um, he gets under the bed when he see, hears her call out. You know, she's cussing, yelling, screaming, which making him more anxious and scared. He dives under his bed, his hospital bed. She goes in underneath there with him, rolls over, hits her head, on the bed or on the floor, and this is called assault, okay? He assaulted her this way. No, actually, she was assaulting him. That's true. They were all assaulting him. And, and this information, this witness testimony from you, is it admissible in court? Oh, yeah, all these witnesses. Everything, all of, everything here is, so what are they going to present? What do they plan to present on, uh, Diane? Well, they're saying that they were assaulted, that my son knew exactly what he was doing, which is insane. He did not. And, and if you look up, you know, uh, phenobarbital level at 50.0, nobody is in their right mind. Nobody. And that's without the brain injury. And that's without the post-traumatic stress disorder. He's freaking. And then she comes after him with a shot of geodon. And she's determined, even in her witness statement. She is hell-bent and determined in her own words that she's going to get him this shot. And that freaked him out even more. So then when they're trying to give him the shot, he actually tried to bite her. He didn't break the skin by her own words in the witness statement, but he did try to bite her. And then they threw a spit hood over his head and got him into four-point restraints. And then started their whining. I, I, I can guarantee you this woman went on work comp. I have seen the actual disc of her alleged injuries. They are dime sized at best, bruises. The whole thing's all trumped Maybe. up. Well, why would this whole, well, the whole thing is trumped up because they're covering up the fact that he was all doped up and, and they almost killed him by the amount of drugs that were put in his body uh, and the combination thereof. Isn't that true? Yes. From um, Anoka County Jail. So Anoka so County Jail. Stearns County is covering up they, they Anoka County. The right. hospital's covering up what Anoka County Jail did to him. Okay, St. Cloud Hospital is, and then you go on, and then Stearns County Jail when they arrested him from the intensive care unit and took him to the jail. They overdosed him on Dilantin. So their medical staff, which the attorney at the arraignment tried to address that with the judge, he wouldn't have any part of it. So, the this, thing is, so this is obviously something that they have, a, they have a mechanism going on. They have a system going on where anything type of, abru of abuse from the prisoners or, uh, uh, or any uh, type of uh, that relationship between the medical and prison system there, they just, they just shut it down. That's what it sounds like. Hi, Mark. I'm Howard Nima and on, of Truth Talk News. I'm trying to help you get some understand get the people to understand uh, the situation that you're in and um, that you've been through an awful lot my friend and being a veteran uh, we're gonna do my I'm gonna do my best to help you uh, get this message out it's absolutely terrible what's happened do you understand what's happening to you 
what the, no. what, what the, what the court is doing. They, they want to take away all of your rights and put you in jail because you were incapacitated. So you, you don't even remember any of this, do you? No. Okay. Do you have any recollection at all of anything that's happened over this period of time? I mean, any no. of any events? Nothing. You don't remember? You served in you served in in Afghanistan, Mark. Mm-hmm. How how many tours of duty did you do? Four. Mark, I'm going to do my best to help you in any way I can. God bless you for your service, you. sir. And um, and we, we're not going to let the story lie. This is not going to go away because this has opened up a can of worms, Mark. And it's a can of worms of, of a bottomless pit of evil. And I'm going to do my best to expose it by God's will and grace and help. We, we will, we will um, overcome this terrible, terrible tragedy of justice. It's a travesty of justice. It's unbelievable. You, you see, you don't understand, Mark, what they're trying to do. They're, they're, they're telling... They're saying that you, the evidence that proves that you are not responsible, they're not permitting that evidence to be admitted. This is what you went to war to, to fight against, tyranny and oppression. Mm -hmm. So we the people have to help you, and I'm going to do my best to make that happen more. Okay, God bless you, and thank you. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye. So Diana, it was you know I, I could see that Mark Mark's obviously you know he just is more like in a yes no response and very minimal things. I know that he only did one tour in Iraq, but he said that he he did four. That's true. He only did one, right? Yes, and and he this is a good day. This is a good he day. He doesn't talk for several days at a time. This is a good day. He's talking. Thank God. Mm -hmm. And then we can get out this information. So again, I'm gonna. As I mentioned to him about what I promised, and I'll be calling and, and emailing this uh, to Brad Davis at WDRC, and hopefully we'll get some reaction. Um, now, if we do, um, I certainly would like to uh, to continue helping you. So I know that Tuesday is the actual court date. That's not no continuance. They can't. They're not going to do anything. You're stuck. No, You've got to go there. So we don't have much time. They won't even allow me to, they won't allow us to fire this woman either, the defense attorney, oh, not that it matters, because the judge is, it's as bad as she is. They're all in it. They're all in on it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're obviously going to get this information out. Uh, you need to get a change of venue. You need to get a, a good attorney. Like I was saying, we need a good attorney, maybe maybe a former veteran, uh, you know, a veteran a former, who, who served and wants to continue to serve our country. Um, please, everybody. This is an appeal. We got to do something because this is our freedom, not just Mark's freedom, our nation's freedom, the liberty of the, the, the future of our country as a free republic is being threatened by this type of tyranny, being accepted by the sheeple, accepting everything that's pushed against them and accepting all of these anti-heroes as being heroes. We have anti-heroes. What happened to real hero heroism? What happened to real truth? What happened to, to God and country? God is a four-letter word for some reason these days. That's got to change. Watch Truth Talk News, 7 p.m. weeknights on truthbroadcastnetwork.com. Diana, thank you for joining me. God bless you. God bless you, and thank you, Howard. Watch Truth Talk News Live. Weeknight, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on TruthBroadcastNetwork.com. Subscribe to Freedom First Films and Truth Talk News Live on YouTube, where news the mainstream media ignores is the top story.